Welcome, bards, zerkers, mages, and thieves. On tonight's show, join our regular hosts Tamlin, Chewina, Kyles, and Flatus as they jump to light speed, discussing confirmed classes in EQN and seeing what you would like to see in the game come launch. As always, we are trying to connect players to the game they play, so all this and more on this show of Evercast. Hold on to your halflings. Here we go. Um, Bartel has been one of the persons who's watched all the shows. Um, I talk to him on a regular basis in the um, EverQuest Next IRC channel. What we saw with, uh, you know, Kunark for, for EQ2, you did those 400 quests, you did all the content, and at the end of it, the world wasn't changed. Yeah, I'm Phantom X. I uh, do social media and uh, write articles for EQ Nexus. For the fall of Bastion, um, there was a very definite. Okay, this is this is where your story is going to fit into the, the world. Listen, fluffy looking bear. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> um, I went and I killed a dragon, and then two drops of whiskey hit my face, and I willed this manly beard into <laughs> <laughs> cow was raising. Yes. Hello and welcome. This is the Evercast Show. Uh, this is uh, Tanlin. I'm here with my co-host, um, Kyles Flatus Chuena. Guy, say hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our 21st episode. We are now legal to drink. Huzzah! Woo woo woo. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about <laughs> we're going to be talking about classes. Um, so we have a lot in store. Let's start up with what's up, uh, Tamlin. You want to kick it off? Ah, uh, what's up with me? Uh, not a whole lot. I haven't been actually doing much of anything. Um, I'm boring. I've been playing the same games. I, I you know what? Because I've been, I've been marathoning Deep Space Nine and Voyager, and I'm like, you know what? I should check out that Star Trek Online game. And so I downloaded it last night, and I played it for about thirty minutes before I realized that this is nothing like fighting. This is nothing like, you know, being the captain of, of the Enterprise or the Voyager. So I gave it up. So it's funny. So it's funny. Yeah. He said, we, I've, I've been, been marathoning. And as he's saying mare, I was like, oh God, he is going to say Mary. married oh. and I'm going to hit him. Hold on, hold on. I forgot. It, it completely spaced. I was on the live feature rant on Wednesday after um, with a uh, legendary neurotoxin. Uh, we talked about um, the, the big news coming out of uh, SOE about the, um, the, the workshops, the, the new metals, um, the style guides and all that sorts of stuff. And I think we're going to talk about that just a tiny bit in the ECAST news segment, because you know, Hey, it's news. <gasps> so this just released. Um, if you've been watching the live streams out of SOE in regards to Landmark, they've finally been able to get to a point where they're ready to start taking submissions into how we want to build the new Norak together. Um, it started off with a nice poll between dwarves and, um, you know, the Dark Elves. And I think we're a little biased for Dark Elves on this show, but Dark Elves, of course, Course one. Um, well, Tanlin, he's neutral. Um, Kyles and I are definitely Dark Elf fans. So it's really cool. We're seeing um, a couple style guides that have been put out by Rosie and the team to kind of guide where they were taking their direction and to guide builders now to sort of take it even further. So we're seeing a lot of things on the forums pop up where people are already working on Dark Elf architecture, kind of helping define the style. So when the team kind of continues to make it, they can build it into something that we develop together. So it's super cool. So, are you going to tell people what you've been up to, Chad? He, he, the, um, the busy the, guy. The busy guy. Yeah, today I um, got my ass handed to me a couple times, slipping, falling. I went to, uh, a, let's say it's not a real LARP. My friends and I decided to have a LARP, and we bought equipment and things like that, and we decided to go out together in the fields. And the hot Florida humidity, which was like 98%, I think, today. But um, while it was raining the whole time, too, it was great. But no, a lot of bruises, a lot of sweat. Some tears, but a lot of fun. It was it was great. Hopefully some more in the future, too, because it's really good exercise. I'm, like, moving things now, and my core just hurts all around me. 
whacking people. It's hard work. But yeah, so that's me. Um, how about you, Kai? <laughs> Trying not to crack up at what you oh, just gosh. said. Wow. I, I just got Trina. it, actually. Yeah. Flat as well, they both are like, oh! I'm a child. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I am sorry that occasionally it's, my... It's okay. Um, my uh my age drops to five i um, set it up I, d- <laughs> so, anyway. oh, so i'm a little jealous of him getting to go larping because it's been a really really long ass time since i have had the privilege of going to a larp and now i'm like suddenly but i miss larping so um <clears throat> What I've been doing lately is, everybody knows I own my own business, and I've been dying a lot of yarn lately. But aside from that, the the nerdy things that I've been doing is I have been playing an epic crap ton of Star Wars The Old Republic. And I've been having so much fun. Uh, It's a little crazy. I realized that crafting in that game is actually pretty fun. Um, I get to send other people to go run errands for me and that's kind of nice you minion go craft this for me because you like me and i love it when the droids are like oh yes mistress of course mistress right away mistress that's amazing oh my god because seriously i have this one droid that actually says that anything to please you mistress if that's what you want i just hope that i do it to your liking mistress and he runs off and he comes back i'm so sorry i failed your mission it's wonderful. I love it. Oh my god. That sounds pretty awesome. It does sound Speaking of, awesome. um... It's okay. It's okay. We're 21 now, so it's... <laughs> there, there's... I really it's fine. Fine. The look that my husband got when I was saying that, and I'm sure he's gonna have words with me when we get off. Oh no, I was totally agreeing. I, this is the face of knowledge. I know how much she likes those types of, you know... <laughs> yes, mistress? <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, he has never said anything like it. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, babe, do you realize what you just did? Yeah, put my foot in my mouth. Mm Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, Uh, (laughs) Um, Interesting. Flat is, what have you been doing? A whole lot of nothing. (laughs) No, that's not true. true. You've been playing a lot of stuff, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, been playing Wildstar since about launch, uh, Mystic, the the lovely, uh, who lets us use his, uh, team speak to talk and where you hear our voices, uh, has a, and I'm gonna give him, uh, Could you explain he, team speak more to our target audience? I don't sure! Team speak is a, <laughs> um... Uh, Mystic has his own uh, p- podcast now for Wildstar. He's with Game, uh, game Breaker, isn't he's, he? He's with Game Breaker, and uh, he bought me the game. He uh, he wants me to play with him. He f- kind of he uh, still no jobs for people that don't really have Twitter and follow us. I still I'm still looking for a job. I haven't found a job yet. Uh, so uh, Mystic, my birthday's in June, so Mystic kind of gave me an early birthday present and bought me Wildstar, so I could play Wildstar for the month. Yeah. And, awesome. uh, yeah, I've been playing Wildstar, and it's very cool, very, a lot of fun. Still some old mechanics, meaning some newer mechanics. Um, still kind of like the old, uh, theme park, go to spot, spot, spot. But crafting is different. Uh, you kind of have to, like, you, you, when you bring up a crafting page, um, you can plug in, like, little nodes and make them different, and then you can wager, like, you can increase things. And you kind of wager, and it tells you, like, you have a 50% chance of this not working because you're trying to bank on making this item that much cooler. So I thought that would be kind of up Talon's alley, <laughs> because you can kind of, like, tweak out, like, your items, and then, like, kind of bank. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Then you're like, you kind of take the hit, like, do you, do, you, do you risk it, or do you play it safe? So. Oh, yeah. I think that's well, cool. Yeah. So. I and mean, then if you play, if you risk it, you probably, you know, make really cool armor and then throw it up on the auction house and, and know who, who's, what's up. I take risks. What's <laughs> right. Up? Um, other like than that, I've been, uh, yeah. And then other than that, just applying for jobs and hanging out and talking to people. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and else of course, still thing. our favorite face to look at on the Evercast show, so we're so glad to have you. Yay! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Well, it's super cool. Um, what else has been going on? Um, Morgard recently came out 
and discuss, if you don't know who Morgard is, he's basically the, the lore lead on EverQuest Next. He came out and discussed, um, in regards to the new style templates that are being put out, um, a little more history about the Dark Elf, your doll, and how they kind of become corrupted. Now, he doesn't give away too much because the upcoming books are going to focus on it, but he definitely goes into a bit about the mystery of the dragon horns because, you know, it's been quoted that Dark Elves have dragon blood in them. Clarifying. Wondering, well... Yeah, yeah, he clarified that, no, Dark Elves did not go and sleep with dragons. It's a little more mystical, and it's a little different. Um, I'm going to link it in chat for you guys to, to read up on, though. Uh, it's very interesting. Hopefully next lore show we can maybe talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah and I think that that's... Um, it, 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 in some cases, I love the mystery behind... Um, behind games like you don't have to explain every little nuance to me because part of the fun is like the that behind the screen type of stuff that you don't really understand or know about and so you your imagination can go with it a little bit and two people can like have disagreements over like what is actually going on but i think that in this case like the actual knowledge of what's going on and you know like parting it that you know something happened to those elves in the umbra realm um, actually makes it cooler because it's like, oh, wow, that's a really good thought. You know, it wasn't anything like dragon blood or anything. It's just like that. They kind of unleashed that, that hidden part of, uh, what was within them. Yeah. It shows that there's really that kind of binding force between all different races too, a little bit that goes back in time. You know, we go back into that older period of the Keldorain, I guess it's called. Um, and we haven't heard anything about this period of Norath really. We've focused more on the combine as of now. So that's cool to see. And it's, it's really cool that there's that mystical essence that kind of connects things around. So the Keldorain pass away, but new elves and new kinds of people come out of it and they all kind of share some kind of connection. So it can lead to some cool stories. And it's that, that last, little sentence at the bottom that really nailed it for me which was that you know even when elves interbreed with other elves the yeah. shadow essence always is the one that that makes itself predominant and that's like that's again one of those little th those little nuanced things that it's like oh that's cool i like that it, yeah it must be some really dark twisted things in umber that we're about to find out i mean yeah it's gonna be cool absolutely um well, i guess we should explain why we have these little icons next to our names Anybody? I yes. like axes. <laughs> I do not like wings on my helm. <laughs> well, she really, really we doesn't. Um, basically, we went back and we chose an EQ class that best defined what we like um, in our MMORPGs. Um, so we have Tamlin the Paladin. And now, Tamlin and Kylos, you guys are a little torn because both you guys like that kind of Paladin role, I think. You're just maybe a little more dark and sinister, Kylist? Or was it because just, you wanted Tamlin to get his pick? Oh, oh no, if I want my way, I get my way. And that's that she's just a little bit say. darker than I am. Just a little. <laughs> um, Flatus, what does your icon stand for? Uh, dwarves and... I'm just kidding, it's the Berserker class. Uh, <laughs> the dwarves. <laughs> um, uh, kind of that crazy, like, you know... I'm going to go in and, and tank and not really <laughs> care. <laughs> like Just swing swords around. And yeah, if uh, remember when they did that April Fool's class where they had like the mountains of bodies? <laughs> so that was pretty much me when tanking. I'm just leaving rows of dead people behind me. It's Hell okay, that's yeah. me and LARPing too. <laughs> Weren't you one of the dead bodies? I was one of the dead bodies. I'm, uh. I'm talking about the going and swinging your swords around all crazy, not worried about dying. Except in RL, you die a little quicker. <laughs> yeah, Usually so, one and done. <laughs> absolutely. I died a lot. Absolutely. Um, was there anything else for what's up, guys? No, <laughs> not really. I, I updated it to the, uh, the eCast News, so we can go right on into that. Well. That's good. And, and so they, not only did they put that little they put that little tidbit out about the uh, the lore of the dark elves, um, and then in the um, the live um, yeah, at landmark live they talked about how the the dark elves won the the voting competition, and so the style guide for the dark elves is now out, um, which means that they and, and this is the big news that they 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 are looking for our feedback. They're calling it the workshop and they gave us the style guide and they said that this is what we think that the architecture of the dark elves should look at 
this is what we think it should look like, but they want our feedback on it. They want us to see um, what we build in Landmark. But but I think that like if you miss the 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 live um, Landmark live, what they were really asking for is like it does not have to be in Landmark for for you to get your feedback to them. If you can draw a picture, draw a picture of it. If you can you know sketch it out. Um, even if you can write it, like I find myself being a much better writer. So I'm just going to be like, if I have an idea about what the style of the dark elves should be like, you know, I can write it down and I can send it to SOE. And through this open development that they've been talking about, like they're going to grab all of these ideas and sift through them and look for the best ideas so that they can incorporate that into our game that we are all, you know, building and generating together. That's very cool. I think that's a great idea. And it, it's, it's, it's good to start seeing it now. So, especially because we're heading towards SOE Live. So, hmm. yeah, convention circuit happens right after SOE Live, too. It's just like convention, 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 convention right after. Like, you have a yeah. yep. kind of have a lull, and then it's just the back end of the year they're going to be going nonstop. So, hopefully, we get some more information on like last convention season, where it was like everything SOE Live. And then after that, I think we got like a shot of a tear doll, and that was it. But, you know, right? They're, um, they're early in production. We can't blame them for that. Mm -hmm. And and that oh, was the the thing about the uh, the this workshop that they're talking about and the style guides. It's that like you know how many different races are they going to have? And so even though I don't really have like necessarily so much I have to say uh, about the dark elves, I mean Kyles probably has a lot more to say than I do. But when we get to the other races, I have a lot that I want to be able to say, like you know dwarves, gnomes, um, those type of you know the the in the earth classes i i find myself having a whole lot more um ideas to that i want to explore with them <clears throat> men's abhorrence and yeah dark elves don't have anything to do with the earth yeah know. but that's that's different right that's it's... and we pronounce it differently is this me being me or is it is it men's abhorrence or men's abhorrence what is it men's abhorrence I think that we lost Flattis and Trina. Winnie Whipper? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. You da, da, say da, da, Winnie da, da, Whipper. Da, 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 da. I say Guinevere. How, how do you say that? How do you say that one more time? Winnie Whipper. Guinevere? Winnie Whipper? You're a. It's, it's Welsh names. Job. Welsh names. <laughs> so. Friar Tuck. The things I know. Gwenny River. Gwenny River. It, it's um, Dungeons and Dragons, Dark Elves, the Drow from there. Oh, like Menza Berenzen is their home city, if I remember correctly. I was and, completely lost. Um, yeah, now I feel bad because it was like, it became pretty obvious that no one else knew what we were talking about. I know. <laughs> You, they kept going anyways, though. They were happy. So I'm completely revoking their key cards. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, you we can't might be, be nerds if you are not familiar with the very least Dungeons and Dragons. Well, let's not get Thank into you. defining what a nerd is. You know, I don't think you have to be into actually sitting down to play the board game to be a nerd. But it is good to know where the kind of history comes from when it comes to MMORPGs. Did you really but... just call it a board game? Okay, so we are talking about class Moving on. and we're going to be talking oh, about... Good night, everybody. <laughs> These are the like... nerds you're looking for. Move along. We like... oh my Move gosh. along. We're going to be talking about um, what kind of classes we'd like to see in the game, what attracts us to certain type of classes, and we're going to be asking you the same kind of questions. Um, so who would like to kind of start this off tonight? Um, Tamlin, I think um, you're going to go over what classes are confirmed to start off. Because there's been a list that have already been confirmed for EverQuest next. Yeah, and I, I just put them up on on our uh, on our page so that you can see them. Um, but first, I just want to go into a little bit about like you know they just we're here we are talking about races and then we're like shifting away from races and not talking about races and going to classes. And the reason why is because um, we have like five or six um, classes that are confirmed for EQ next, and then there are maybe like five more races that we know about that could be in the game or could not be in the game um 
And we could have it. We're going to have a show where we talk about the races of EQ next. But it is so much more fun to talk about classes because we know there's going to be more than 40. They said there's going to be 40 or more somewhere in that neighborhood. And the list that they've given us is only 13, which means that we have another like 27 that we get to play with. Like, well, what about this idea or this idea or this idea? And we can have a whole lot more fun talking about like the things that we like to see um, in the game for classes available, what type of mechanics for classes that we're drawn to and and that sort of thing. Um, so, so, so to kick it off, um, like I said, the, there's the 13 classes, uh, that are confirmed for the game, adventurer, bard, beast lord, blade master, cleric, necromancer, paladin, ranger, rogue, shadow knight, tempest, warlord, and wizard. Okay. And uh, I got this from the, the EverQuest wiki page, which means that, um, if there isn't a source for those, not my fault. That's where I got them from. <laughs> um, I know that counts, like, right? which is, which is weird because like the bard, right. Is the, the and I know that that um, um, Smedley it's been in a story. It's been in a novel, and it's been said by Smedley. Right, right. right. Smedley in his AMA, like he was asked, "What class in EverQuest next do you like the most?" And he was said, "Bard." And we're like, "Bards are in the game." Um, and as far <laughs> as I know, that's the only one where that's where we learned about it from. The rest of them were talked about SOE Live um, in 2013. Um, there was one class that was talked about in a magazine article, and then the adventurer has been, uh, we've learned about through Landmark. Um, so with that list of the 13 classes that are confirmed, um, what do you guys think? What is it missing? <laughs> Well, I guess we should explain um, a couple of them, because while most of them are sort of generic, we have things like the Blade Master and Tempest, which are a little different. And of course, we don't know all their abilities and things, but we can give kind of a gist. The Tempest is what I would consider Thor as a class. It's lightning-based hammer attacks, you know. Mm, Thor as um, a class I, with the sword, because what, I think that the video that we saw of that class, he was yeah, using a sword. That's true. So, well, okay, without a hammer and a sword instead. But I guess most of your melee attacks will give AoE lightning damage and a, a lot of lightning-based attacks. Um, now, we don't know if that's going to be more of a spellcaster or more of a warrior, but it looks like, from what we've seen, a warrior. Can I draw that assumption? What do you guys think? I think that it's just, um, like, um, you're going to have your warrior, and then it's going to be a type of specialized warrior that is going to be the Templist. The Templist. Uh, Tempest. And <laughs> you're going to be able to grab, um, I, you know, I think that people were going to be drawn to the Tempest class if that's their type of lightning-esque, you know, melee com combatant. But I think that in another way, you're going to be able to take your warrior class and say, hey, I really want this lightning attack because of this other effect it has. And so you'll see like a warrior with a Tempest ability thrown in there for, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe, maybe it has a, a stun, right? Like it shocks you as the Tempest and it stuns you. And so you're yeah. going to be building your warrior and you're going to be like that stun ability that the Tempest has, the warrior doesn't. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab it and equip it so that I have that stun available. That would be cool. Yeah. Or maybe you could build stacks on the target as you hit them with your sword. And then after a time, it could trigger a stun or do like mega damage while they're running away or something. A lot of cool things. Um, and then the other is the Blade Master. And I picture two swords, very agile characters swinging into battle, spinning around real quick and jumping out before it gets too heavy. Right. Um, and it, for me, um, Mad Mardigan from Willow. He was a warrior. He was using swords, but he wasn't we he wasn't wearing any armor in that in you know in that movie. And it was just you know he was the blade master. Give it, give me a sword. I'll win this war for you. That's the his line from the movie. I think that that's what the the, the blade master is going to be like. Give me a sword. I'll win this war for you. Does Does Chad know what we're talking about this time? Have you Have you, <laughs> have you seen Willow? How do you How do you have not seen Willow? 1988. Listen, listen, you're not staying for after show. After the show, you go watch Willow. <laughs> Fair enough. I will put that. A reluctant dwarf <laughs> must play a critical role in protecting a special baby from an evil queen. That is the IMDb. Typically, that's not the kind of movie I watch right away. You guys say it's good, so I will check it out. Typically, that is not the type of movie I watch right away. <laughs> But no, I will definitely, it's, I will it's definitely really, give it to Chase. I think that older than Chad and his friends. It is. It's by two years. It is older. So, I mean, while I've seen what, a lot what of... Year what, is is, what year is it? What year? 
it was 1988. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Nah, I, feel I was born in 1990. I'm 23. That's, that's how it works. I'm you were born in October. 1990. 1990. You yeah. are closer to my son's age than you are to mine. <laughs> well. I'm the median on the show, so I can't say anything. Plotus is older than me. I bet. I'll, I'll be 29. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, instead of let's wow. pick on Chewie for being young tonight, we can continue on. Necromancer, my favorite class. Um, as you can see by the icon indicated next to me. Um, I want to see something really cool that's not really been done with Necromancers. <laughs> and I want to see the ability to control other players more. Like, if I can I don't actually know target about. Flattis and make him my pet for a minute, where he's not getting damaged, but his character is actually attacking for me and doing the damage, so his teammates having to attack him, that's the kind of corruption I'd like to see. That'd be cool. Um, a lot of the time, necromancers are... Um, you either get one pet or you get mini pets. I prefer it when you get mini pets, mini skeletons to attack with, but I'd also like to see something new and something exciting, and I think that would be kind of cool. More corrupting other players and not just bringing back the dead. And Necro. Um, Necro Mancer. That's Well, yes, it has to be about death, but at the same time, it can be about corruption. I guess it's not really a coercer. Well, see, that's what I was thinking. Like, when we're talking about those other classes, we were talking about that one of the ones that I, you know, was imagining was the, um, and I couldn't quite find the name for it, but, like, the Afflictor. You know, the one that is like, I'm the, the, basically the, the classic dot spreader, right? Like you get a disease and you get a disease and you get a disease and you get a disease. And that's like what they, the, what the they, op <laughs> the Oprah of Norath. <laughs> but, but you're right. It could be like a, one of the, um, the, in one of the novels, the e-novels, they were talking about, um, the, the affliction school of magic with the, with the, you know, the slowly growing that decaying force inside of something. And, um, I think that, you know, when we we're talking before the show, that's one of the things that we said we want to see. Um, but I wouldn't, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Necromantic magic or non-necromantic magic? Something new. Why In regards both? to a necromancer? I think both. Yeah. Like, we're seeing some generic descriptions here. Uh, like, rogue. What A rogue. Typically, a rogue's more of an archetype than it is a class in most games. It depends. Sometimes it varies. And I come from EverQuest 2, so it was more of an archetype. Um, EverQuest 1 had a rogue. Um, does WoW have a rogue-specific class that's just called the rogue? They have yeah. rogue, but just like um, they, they have the, the, the old-school talent trees where you had your rogue, which was your archetype, but then you could specialize into subtlety, assassination, or combat. Where, um, where your combat rogue was not the backstabber, hide in the shadow type. Um, they weren't the kind that do it from behind. But, but we can see kind of those same sorts of things where we're <laughs> trying to keep it together here. Um, but yeah, and here I'm going to do the the backstabby type like you could see like um when again we talked about before the show where i said the assassin would be a class that i'd like to see where it is a class where it is specifically not about you know this is like jumping in doing as much damage in as short a period of time as possible and then getting back out you know trying to you know get that one shot kill in yeah, I mean, everything's guaranteed to be movement-based in EverQuest Next, even tanking. So, like, if you're going to be that Shadow Knight, or you're going to be that Warrior, or I think you said Warlord earlier, um, you're going to be moving a lot, because you're going to have to watch your flanks, and you're going to have to be blocking different kinds of attacks. Of course, we haven't seen this in action, so it's hard to speculate that far, much farther than that, but... Um, it's definitely going to be movement-based, and you're not just going to be sitting there spamming your, like, 50 spells. Um, is it cool that we go over kind of how the classes or skills work in EverQuest next from what we've heard so far? Yeah, sure. I can say anything quick? I can do the quick breakdown. You're going to have yeah, your one... Down. You're going to have your one class that is going to be your equipped to class. It's going to be the class that you have selected to play. Um, when you select that class, that class will tell you what armor type you wear. 
um, whether it be, you know, cloth, leather, um, mail, plate, whatever. Um, I don't know if they've broken it down specific, like these are our categories, but they have said that it will, your class chooses your armor, your class gives you weapon sets, like it'll be sword and shield, hammer and gold, something like that. It's going to define your weapon sets and you're going to have two that you can swap between. Um, I don't know if there's going to be more than just those two, but they have said that you will have weapon sets that you'll switch between. Um, and then your class will decide what your four ability slots are going to be. Um, and then the one, the ones that they showed us were offense, defense, and utility. And so like, uh, you know, like the assassination rogue that I had just talked about would probably just speculative, um, have like three offensive abilities that they could equip. Um, and from your all the classes that you've unlocked that you've learned you can equip whatever class whatever ability that you want into that ability if it fits that slot offense to offense utility to utility and that is how you're going to build your archetype uh with the you know the, you know you take your class and this is my customized class um and then and this is where it gets a little into the gray area they talk about how your equipment is going to modify your abilities in different ways than, you know, just straight, hey, this is a plus 15 strength item that you're wearing. It, it sounded more like it was going to adjust your resources so that if you needed to, a lot of movement, you would make something, um, you would wear something that would increase your movement so that you could use your abilities better. Um, yeah, and it, it goes a little farther, doesn't it? It actually kind of garners what ability you're using so i think of it like guild wars 2 when i'm using this kind of weapon even though i'm the same class i have a different set of skills available for me to pick from so i think it based it's based off that and then at the same time it's about adding stats because you're taking away when you multi-class um your ability to work well in certain situations depending on how well you make your class because say i want to be a teleporting rogue well i have all my rogue abilities and they all use this amount of power this amount of stamina for me to be able to execute them with it with efficiency or within a certain amount of time um so when i maybe get that teleport in there i might have to drop a couple different abilities from my lineup because it's really not going to work out unless i find that awesome loot a boot loot a boot boot that's terrible i find some boots and i can wear those boots to be able to give me a little more power to my pool or give me a little more region and then that allows me to kind of create that class after that right um it's going to be cool. It, it sounds like basically classes with multi-classing, is, it's going to be one giant pool, or am I selecting from two classes? Can I select from three, or is it only two at this point? No, I think that they've said that, that once you've learned your, your classes, right, like you've unlocked 10 classes, you've discovered them, and you can equip any of these 10, like you can uh, grab the abilities from any of those 10 classes and equip and one of those abilities and, and make your own. Um, and that sounds really, really cool. Um and I, I can't wait to see what some people put together because, you know, there's going to be there's going to be some people that are like min maxing it. And then there's going to be the clowns out there that are going to grab, you know, certain abilities just to do the, the craziest stuff that they can come up with. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. And min maxing is a little weird in this game because we don't know how much stats are going to be important since it's not so much of a vertical grind. Um, though, if we look at landmark stats are still kind of important when it comes to items. But if it's more action based, then it could be not necessarily that you're gaining so much power, but maybe you're gaining that new dash ability or something from your item too. So that that's something to keep in mind. What are you guys? What what's your class right now that you want to see in the game? Whether it's your wildest creation or it's what you picked right now that's next to your name. What would you guys like to play in EverQuest next first? Man. See. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm also I'm gonna post a poll in chat real quick. It's our first straw poll. We have like four lined up. Um, so while we kind of talk about this, you can kind of vote. We have five, sorry. So five. while we talk about this, you can kind of start voting, guys. So go ahead, Kai. Hey. I, I'm I'm torn, and I'm always torn between playing the good guy and the bad guy. Um, I play a little of both, except for you know, Warcraft, and then it's Horde for Life. Um, it, part of me says Shadow Knight is what I would play first, and then the other part of me says I'd play Paladin first, but I don't know. It, with them taking away the whole, like, the, the tank heal kind of taking them away kind of thing, it, it makes it harder for me to decide which one I'd play first. 
So I'd probably just play Shadow Knight because, you know, pew pew. Yeah, from the list they have so far, I don't see what I want to see, and that's an Illusionist or an Enchanter. Um, that was one of my most fun classes to play in EverQuest. So if I'm choosing anything that hasn't been listed yet, I'm going to have to go with an Illusionist. So an, an ability to have oh. kind of mezzing and an ability to control crowds. I love that in any class. Something that hasn't been listed yet? There's nothing that I would play that hasn't been listed yet, honestly. I'm, I'm very narrow-minded. Unless there's some sort of shaman-type thing. But... Beastmasters, is that more hunter or don't know? Is it bad that oh, when awesome. che Chewie said illusionist that the first thing in my head was that when Chewie did like some special like crazy move, he did like those crazy like Las Vegas magician move at the end of it. He's like, ah, it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like a, a woman in like yeah, sequence yeah, pops out from behind him and <laughs> she jumps in a crate, cuts her in half, and he pushes her away and then I, I I controls people. Like, that's the exact class wow. I would like to see in Everquest next. I want a top hat and all of it. <laughs> Let me pop out rabbits as an AoE attack and they start right, riding okay. everything. Okay. That would be hilarious. The illusionist class the illusionist class needs a top hat that they can that that, that is part of their, their gear set, right? <laughs> The magician. I'm just going to start calling great. him Tuxedo Mask from now on. <laughs> and if anybody gets that reference, I love you forever. See, for for me, <laughs> for for me, for me, um, of those cl of the classes that are listed as confirmed, I probably lean towards the cleric because I I like healing and I like playing the plate wearing healer class. Um, so I I don't know cleric, but it really depends on how the the cleric plays. Um, because but I thought there weren't like any healers. They, they, no, no. They, they said that it's not going to be like your typical um you know whack a mole type healing where there's there's the um you know their green bar is going down and you hit it and it goes back up. They're going to try and avoid that type of thing, and that really makes me a little nervous as a healer because if they make it too difficult, I'm going to be like, nope, I, I just can't do it. I can't be an effective healer, and so I'm just going to concentrate on button mashing and killing things. Um, so with that said, if I can't be a healer, then um, the class that I would play that was not on the list, um, I think we, we've just called it like the Lancer, and that is your plate armor wearing with the two-handed staff with a blade or a spear at the end of it. Um, that type of class, right? What? Right. What? Right. I I've seen it called a bunch of different things. Um, Final Fantasy fourteen, I think, calls it the Lancer class, and that's like, and when I look at the picture of the Lancer from Final Fantasy fourteen, that's the closest I can point to and say like that. That right there is what I'd like to see to play. Um, where it's not you know sword and board, and it's not like using a, a big two handed sword or a two handed axe. It's well, it is kind of like a two handed axe, but you're you're using it as a at a range type thing. Um, so I, who's next? What do you, what do you want to see? And then we'll go to the, the results from the first poll and see what other people are saying. Yeah. Sounds good. Flattis. So what would be your class of choice other than a berserker or someone who just runs in and wrecks damage? Be a little more creative. Okay. <laughs> a berserker. <laughs> berserker. No, I'm just kidding. With a top hat. <laughs> With a top hat. <laughs> um, honestly, I would like to see a, um, I'm, I'm gonna go a little. I'll be the one that goes a little crazy with the the classes and stuff like that. Um, I would like to see a witch class, and I, I say that because I have another th class that goes up against it. I want to see a witch class, and and the witch class would be a class that is a, a, a caster, um, but also a poison dealer as well. Like she can throw out. I'm saying she, but he. Uh, they can throw out um, jars of poison. As well, or like potions and stuff like that. Has and somebody if... been playing Minecraft? Yeah. Uh, kind of like that. Actually... Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of like the witch from Minecraft. That <laughs> would actually be kind of cool. I could totally yeah. throw bottles at people and be like, "Look, bitch, yeah, right. take it." Yeah, yeah so... that would be cool. Yeah, and then uh, you can like you can and also like kind of a crowd like buffer or, or debuffer of of people. Like you can throw out stuff. Like you can throw potions out on uh, people of your party and buff them that way, and throw out. Uh, potions out onto the enemies and debuff them that way as well and then you still have your wand and you can cast I don't want to say necromantic spells but maybe like hexes and stuff like that like stuff that is kind of different and neat stuff we haven't seen quite yet so and I like would like half witch half rogue like 
That's kind of yeah. badass. I want yeah. to take that class. See, I want, that, I want that class. I want that class. That one sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> So I would like to see which class. I think it'd be kind of an interesting class to play, and it's it's a little more of the darker side of, you know, you always get and not to to squish the the necromancer the, the necromancer, but I think it would be something different where we wouldn't we wouldn't get to see like, um, like bring raising of the dead and controlling people. Yeah, well, I mean, but necromancer more of the, is like the darkest you go. A witch would be somewhere kind of down like, the line to darkness, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Stealing your soul, entrapping it in a bottle, and giving it to your friend, kind of thing. That would be cool. yeah. Yep. Only yeah. Chewina would think of that. I would. Yep. Stealing souls? I Soul see Stealing stealers. souls. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's... Who's winning so far in this poll, Tano? No, we got I, there was, when I, The last I looked, it, it was a tie. Um, let's go back and check the, out one more time. The Illusionist and the Chronomancer, I believe. Go yeah. Illusionist. Yeah, yeah, it's the top hat thing. Um, it's it's it, Dino <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> that, that is exactly what it is. is that everybody was like, oh, yeah, a mage with a top hat. That's totally what I want to do. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> now the Chronomancer was something I was thinking about, and it's it's from playing a lot of MOBAs. So characters like Zillion and League of Legends. Um, there's a couple others throughout different games, but the ability to kind of reverse time. So maybe you have something that resets all your cooldowns, or there's a, a character in Smite. I I'm not lying. Basically, it counteracts all the moves you made in sequential order, reversing time, and your character moves backwards and everything, so you cast all those spells that recast them as you're moving away from the target. It's pretty cool. Um, so I'd like to see something like that, and, and that's what I kind they, of put up on the in, in Warcraft, they've added um, a lot of time-type spells in this latest expansion or two, and I, I had no idea, because I don't really play mage, and I don't really talk to a whole lot of mages, but what they've done with, what they've done with um, time shift... Wow. It's been really cool because it, it remembers like what buffs you have on. So like say you have buffs that last for six seconds or something like that. And you're like, remember everything that I have on me right now. And, you know, 10 seconds later, you want all those buffs back. You can go back in time and get all those buffs back. And it, it's it was pretty cool to see. And I, I again, it's just like some of those abilities that, you know, like put me to the, that state where I had all these nice buffs on me. And, um, so that was like, the... the that was our first votes, and I think that we might have had too many classes up on that first one because there were some that Wait, got maybe, none. Was like ten, right on the right. first, yeah. And, and it was, it was like <laughs> assassin, guardian, and something else, right? So some of those classes that we've seen reiterated over and over again didn't really get the votes, which is interesting. Rogue got more votes on assassin, didn't it? That's odd for me. I don't know. I Rogue didn't get any votes. It's a like, simple. Oh, okay, so rogue it's is the a, same as assassin, right? Well, it's a confirmed class, so there's no like, what would you like to see? It's like, well, we know True, the rogue is going to be in there. Yeah, yeah, but assassin was not listed, so maybe we just don't have a lot of killers in our chat tonight. <laughs> don't worry, there's plenty of killers on the actual show. So, um, I went ahead and linked the second poll. Do we want to do another round robin of classes we'd like to see while they vote on that poll? Sure. All right, uh, Flask, go and lead it off. I'm going to start spamming this sure. in the chat. I'll I'll do the counter to the witch, the witch hunter. <laughs> now the witch hunter class is a. Now I'm gonna say the unpopular thing. They may have a gun, <laughs> but <laughs> they use. Um, they're still darker, but good on the side of dark. Uh, I would say, think of like they use. They're like lawful evil. Yeah, exactly. They're lawful evil. They're 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 uh, they 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 wear like a buckler on their head. Like <laughs> they got a hat. Very leather based. Um, I would say quick movement. They ha carry a sword and a gun. Uh, mo most I don't know if you're kind of into like Warhammer. Uh, Van Helsing. Uh, Van Van Helsing for that matter. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> but um a. a a kind of a mix between a range and melee DPS class, where you at, at range you can you can do some damage, but you're probably a little more effective close up, and then you're gonna be able to be the person that kind of can remove hexes off people. So think PvP. If someone's getting hexed by a witch, a witch hunter would be the person to remove those hexes off of you very quickly, and can still buff people with type of a darker holy power because they're gonna be more of the. Um, I would say if if you're a fan of comics and you read, uh, or if you've seen not, not the great movie, but uh, the um, I can't even think of it, the Keanu Reeves movie where uh, he fought off demons. I can't remember think 
the name of it. But Constantine. Constantine, yeah, it's coming out. The new show coming out this fall looks great. That's actually closer to the comic. Uh, think that like where you're kind of like, I still have to deal with demons, but I'm doing good. <laughs> Right, so right, and that, that, was the, that was the thing about Constantine, it was that he was kind of a not nice person, but he understood that he was fighting against the world being the world, a yeah. well, lot worse off. Um, yep. Me and myself, I voted for um, the shape-shifting class, um, and, and only because the way that, you know, Chewie can... Because he wants to be a tiger. No, no, the the, 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 the way that the <laughs> pool was written, it was like there were druid and there were shapeshifter and they weren't the same class. But I, I, I think that that was one of the, when I think druid, I think shapeshifter, like they have the ability to change oh. into different forms and they use the form that is able to get the job done. Right. So if you need like, you know, some like, ah, then you go tiger form or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I that true. I when I wrote that, um, shape shifting was more of the fact that oh, I can make a doppelganger of your character, to where it, it looks exactly like you were from a different person, and maybe you can even like switch your roles. So you're standing somebody... where the other person was. Um, but yeah, Drew would be more to go in tiger stance and getting some tiger. Well, yeah, right, and, and somebody and needs to introduce him to D and D because he would maybe understand a little bit better why we feel the way that we feel about. Right, and right. I, I understand that it, it is kind of like the you know taking it from from Warcraft, but even in old school D and D, like the the druid could change their their. You know, they could change Absolutely. their form once per day, and then it, as you went up levels, you could change your form more often. And then it's like, you know, all of these, you know, it's fantasy realms, they all borrow from one another. And so, yeah, the, the druid to me, shapeshifter, um, you know, you, you, you see the need to take a form to accomplish a goal, so you just change your form. Bear, bird, you know, whatever. Yes. Yeah, are we are we ready to see the results of this last one? I haven't looked in the. True. Um, one second. I do want to ask Flatus. Um, what would you say to your witch hexes being something that lasts past combat? So maybe you have like this ultimate hex that you cast on somebody, where their character within a day or so will turn into this awful beast or instantly die, to where they have to seek out a witch hunter or seek out a potion um, from across the land to kind of get their hex off. Would you like to see anything cool like that? Or yes, all kind of I would because, combat stuff? because it would, it would have people like rely on like, Hey, yo, 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 dude, I need to get this. And I would also say <laughs> maybe throw in like an NPC just in case you don't like, if you're not on a friendly server, at least have yeah. an NPC that can do it and kind of remove the hex off of you. So it's like, all right, I have 24 hours and I turn into like, a so slime. you've been hexed by a witch. I have what you need. I would love for you I would love to turn potion. people into frogs. <laughs> just watch somebody hop. And you're just like, dude, this sucks. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, like you're cursed. And there's been a couple games in the past that have done. I think Rift did like a flu or something that was going around to where I think WoW might have done something too, where it spread wow. to one person. They, to they another. didn't mean it's for like it to. No, they didn't mean oh, for it to. So, okay, it, it was. It was I was gonna say that it, what happened was that uh, the they didn't think that the the virus or the 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 plague would have gotten to the city. It wasn't supposed to do that. So people were camping the where you would uh, zone in into the cities, and, and every time somebody zoned in, they caught it. So it spread like wildfire. So the CDC looked at Warcraft <laughs> just in case like a zombie event did happen. They kind of looked at Warcraft and said, "Well, that's how it would happen. That's how it would spread so quickly." <laughs> So um, I'm going to go to the results now, um, and I think that one of the classes that was on that poll, we haven't talked about at all, um, and that is the, um, the engineer with, with, uh, with turrets and throwing down mines, maybe throwing down grenades, not, not throwing mines, putting mines down, throwing grenades, maybe having like a rifle or something like that. Um, we've seen that yeah. in, we've seen that a lot in Guild Wars too. The engineer was, was definitely one of those classes that had the bombs and the grenades in the mines. Warhammer had one too, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, I think you could even take it a step further in EQ next with the voxel environment. And maybe your engineer is more than just placing a turret and running away, but maybe he's more of a civil engineer too. Like, Oh, he can like clear this little land and place a trench or put up barricades and things like that. Or, or his portable it. ladder to you know, get over the, or, <laughs> over the wall. Yeah, yeah, Cause you're talking about a very movement based system, right? So it's like, Hey, we need to be able to move over to there so he you know 
throws down a bridge yeah, or a ladder. Like some expandable ladder, yeah. Um, so not just the fact that you have to sit back and throw your grenades, but um, really terraform the world under you. That would be kind of cool. So if, if, if Tamlin and, and I start shaking, it's shaking, it's because there was an earthquake in L.A. In LA. And we're, and we're really close to the earthquake in L.A. In LA. Just as a heads up. That'll be interesting. Was, was it bad? I, it, it was like a four point. Okay. So your cameras just might shake a little bit, maybe? Maybe. 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 If we were in awesome. Florida, you know, you'd be <laughs> sinkhole opening up. <laughs> there was a sinkhole that just opened up um, down by Legoland in a public parking lot. The whole thing just... <laughs> yeah, There's a Legoland a in Florida? There is. It opened up... Well, I guess it's behind, beside the point, but it was just a few years ago. It wasn't too long ago, um, so it's new. But I guess it's their their second U.S. park. I could be wrong on that one. It is. Yeah, the, yeah, the first one is in California. Carlsbad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very similar. I don't I don't know. I haven't been, so. Well, awesome. Um, so who is winning in our second poll again? Is it going to go to... No, the, there was a, it, it was a tie. The shapeshifter? Or? It was, it was a tie between the shapeshifter and the engineer class. And that's why I was like, wow, we didn't even talk about that class. But yeah, it's, it's a yeah, pretty popular yeah. class. Um, I just think you could do a lot of cool stuff with it. And everyone loves a little tech. You know, whether you're kind of making it steampunkish or whether you're making it more kind of real fantasy known creations, everyone likes a little bit of tech in their fantasy. Um, it's it's kind of boring when it's all magic. No, not so. everybody. You don't think so? There yeah. are some yeah. people that are very old who so, don't, um, don't it, like it, steampunk. They don't want dense in their fantasy genres. Yeah. And, and my only my only thing is this: is that given human, or given intelligence, it doesn't have to be intelligence, but given an intelligence enough time in a natural environment they're gonna figure things out unless magic is suppressing technology and so i think that if you and if they're working together you're gonna get like accelerated um capabilities but unless like magic is actively suppressing technology you're gonna have you know crossbows and then like it's like oh hey if i ignite this powder that i get when i dry this out it kind of goes poof and we can harness that power it's like it doesn't yeah. require a whole lot of engineering to come up with the the, the simple things that's yeah. very true our next poll Wait. um have you started linking that chat it's no, not but i'll link it right now it's not necessarily about the class. It's more about like what type of thing that you would like to use in your class. And that was one of the conversations, things that um, we hadn't talked about at all. So maybe we can talk about that a little bit is what type of mechanics draw you to a class? What type of mechanics push you away from a class um, when, it, when it comes to MMOs in general, not just EverQuest Next? Anybody? Because I, I know that there is one mechanic that I hate and that is... Um, any class where I have to maintain a buff on me and maintain a debuff on the target to me to, to maximize my damage as a DPS dealer, because it's so much, you know, it's like, okay, I have to have to keep this up on me, have to keep that out on them, keep it up on me. And it's just an obnoxious and annoying. I don't like having to do it. It's just like, let me mash my buttons and go on my way. I don't know, because I play Warlock and I kind of enjoy it. And you play DK and you kind of enjoy it. I mean, you've got two now. Do you keep, yeah, but that's like diseases. Don't give me that. But it's it's Horn it's Horn a winter. long long time. Horn of winter. I can kind of see that though. It can get annoying. I was an illusionist in EQ too, and basically you were a buff bot for the longest time before they upped the damage. Um, and it was essentially like let me hit my six procs at once and then keep them up over the duration of the fight with perfect timing. You know, syncing it with my high DPS mage. Luckily, hopefully the combat system is going so far away from that that we won't even have to worry, you know, that we can still have a utility class that doesn't have to worry about keeping up their 15-button rotation absolutely perfect to, to go right. Um, but yeah, I agree with that. Um, I'll just add that I don't like to tank. Um, I'm not someone who typically likes to be right up in the fight. I, I prefer to be an archer or a mage or somewhere where I can run around and kind of nuke everything below. So, that's me. I like tanking. And healing. Right. So what, what are the mechanics that you like to see? Um, do you like active mitigation? Do you like um, control type tanking where you're just... I like those shit buttons. buttons. Cooldown usage. Yeah. yeah. All right. I call, I'm sorry. I call them most shit buttons. Isn't it ever That's what they are. That's what they are. That's what they are. But it took me a minute. Like, I'm like, wait, wait. Oh, oh. oh I know it. 
so damage reduction cooldown type I, tank. I like that, so the reason I like to tank is because I like to feel that little tiny adrenaline rush. Like I have to sit just on the edge of my seat and oh shit, oh shit. Oh got him. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much why I tank. <laughs> pretty much mm. exactly why I tank. See? When I tank, a little bit of anxiety involved in my class is exactly what I want. When I tank, the only reason I do is because I like being in the charge. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I have a healer that will keep up with me. Off we go. Oh, <laughs> We're going at my pace. Oh god, oh, god. I, t I I heal for him when he tanks sometimes, and oh my god. So true. Hey, there's a quote from Willow. It's like, you forget that I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that we brought Willow back. <laughs> right. You forget that I am in charge. Okay, where are we going? That way. And, you know, that's the type of tank I am. I'm, you know, put me in charge so that I can blaze off on the trail that I want. I'm kind of a mix of you both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more. I'm kind of a mix. Like wow. I like. The, I like the anxiety, and I kind of like the like. E keep your heels ready, because I'm about to go jump into a pile of guys. Hell <laughs> take, yeah. take that as you will. But at the end of it, I'm the only one left standing. I had a friend like that. Yep. When we were playing EQ2 together, he was a berserker, I believe. So maybe very similar to you, Flaz, when it comes to playing. He would do the exact same thing. You know, I'm not a healer. I'm an illusionist. I'm just trying to mez so we keep alive. And he's just pulling everything in the zone at once. He's like, oh, you can handle this, right? And I'm like, sure, after we wipe like 15 times. Hey, as long as I can hold aggro and you guys can blow things up, then I'm okay. Just like a lot of... A lot of mobs around you. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I like tanking when it's friends because I would rather die a bunch of times with friends than go at a snail's pace with people I don't know and maybe get something done. Like I, I, I mean, I would rather just completely fail because we can't do one thing or the other with me as the tank um, because it just doesn't feel like there's the same sort of expectations you queue in as a tank or if you you're running around as a tank with people that that don't really know you and they're like oh he's a tank he should know what he's doing i'm like no don't <laughs> <laughs> what's going to be interesting is how tanks really hold aggro in eqn because it's not so much a full aggro model right it's not the fact right, that oh, right. i have this taunt and you're going to attack me they're going to be constantly thinking and adapting the situation. Like, oh, the mages are yes. back there. We really need to take that mother ever out, even though the tank's holding us here. So how is the tank going to be able to hold the mob there? Or are they? Maybe they're going to have to stick back with their casters. Area You're denial. Collision. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe denials and things like that. It'll be interesting. More, but that's more passive, isn't it? Or reactionary. How does the tank go from reactionary to more of an active stance in combat? Maybe just more damage. I, I don't know. It's interesting. Flanks are important, and it depends how they get their pathing right and collision going in the game. But if they can do that properly, then you can see some really cool abilities to like adjust flanks and make phalanxes with your other tanks and stuff like that. I can see that being very cool for, for group combat, PvP, and, and even just PvE. That'd be cool. I have some so missing. maybe I'll tank an EQN. Yeah. The, the the only thing that I really like that that I really dislike about tanking or healing is that if I'm playing a tank or a healer and I decide that I want to go run a couple of quests on my own, babe, will you come help me? Because my tank can't put enough damage uh, out to kill those mobs. Yeah, and that the same healer with class, healing. And yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a tank. I shouldn't have to ask somebody else for help. I don't want to sit there for an hour banging on somebody's face to kill them, but no, I have to because I'm a tank. I don't do enough damage. I'm just there to piss them off. And the same with being a healer. Oh, no, no, please let me heal your ass to death. Yeah. The, and, 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 Absolutely. That's yeah. one of the things that I was going to bring up later is that a lot of times, right. like, right. I have my characters that I play, and I play as a healer, and then, like, I always have to, like, worry about, well, is my healer going to be able to put out enough damage, and if not, then I have to do something so that I can quest, because you can't quest as a healer. Um, not really. I mean, some, yeah, it's, it's awful. Yeah, see, that's where the benefit of passive healing comes in. Um, but question, has anyone really gone too far into Guild Wars 2? Because are there still Flavor of the Month classes that you need in Guild Wars 2, despite there not being that Holy Trinity? 
No, I only played um, I like for a month or two in Guild Wars 2, and I played mostly in world PvP where you were responsible for healing yourself. Okay. Um, but then, but the, but the weird thing about Guild Wars 2 is that I, I went back into the same sort of support type role in that I played a thief and I had like my area cloak where I could throw down a smoke bomb and turn my teammates invisible. And so if we were taking a lot of advent in taking a lot of damage, I would, you know, do things to mitigate the damage we were taking. And so that I, I, I see that as an active role as like a support in EQ next is like, okay, I'm not going to just like try and heal you and then heal you and play whack-a-mole type healing, but I'm going to do things like, okay, I'm going to reduce the amount of damage that we're in, we're taking so that we stay alive longer, which is the same thing, almost like healing. Yeah, that um, combination, that and the fact that through damage you heal i think that's something going forward in games that's the very blood fun mage. Because that was my first healer you're, yeah you're taking that active role and you're having fun damaging things and you know ceasing them doing all that but you're you're helping the group and healing at the same time but i guess uh the first hour is kaput correct it, it yep. is and um if we want to see the results um magic duh one <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> right because because there's different yeah. flavors uh, flavors of magic but it all is classified as magic but when you're talking weapons it's like well do you like this weapon or that weapon or that yeah it's yeah well you know i guess magic would be more of a full-on magic role right i mean if you're going to classify these the way they are you know if you're saying magic that's like oh yeah i don't want a weapon at all i just want my magic um but of course you know you can have someone who has their dagger that has magical abilities and you know everything kind of crosses especially when it comes to eq and since everything crosses but anyways i guess we should camp out um i'm gonna camp out if that's cool i will not be here for after hours i'm exhausted from that larp earlier so uh your host flattis tamlin and kyles will be finishing up this next hour but it should be a lot more fun because they have some better holes and i you know maybe you guys will get their references when i'm not around messing them up uh, but anyways um i will see you guys in two weeks and they'll see you very shortly so don't go anywhere camping in five four three two and one see you guys Thank you.